Welcome to WGVU Public Media's Decision 2020. In this online forum, we introduce you to the Michigan Supreme Court Justice Candidates. This is an opportunity for voters to hear directly from the judicial candidates. We're recording these interviews via Zoom from the studios of the Meyer Public Broadcast Center at Grand Valley State University. Today's recording is in association with the Grand Rapids Bar Association. It generated the five questions we'll be asking the candidates. Joining us now is Brock Swartzel. Thank you for having me, Patrick. Um, and I, I love the opportunity to, to talk with people. And uh, uh, as, my, as you indicated, my name is Brock Swartzel. I'm a judge on the Michigan Court of Appeals, and I'm running for the Michigan Supreme Court this fall. Could you please tell us why you feel you should be elected to the Michigan Supreme Court? We need a Supreme Court that rules without fear or favor. Uh, we need a court that focuses solely on the facts and the law, and that does not allow partisan interests to influence their decisions. Um, we need a court that understands the separation of powers, one that respects the other two branches of government, but one that also does not back down uh, in, from either one. Uh, these are the ideals that I have followed on the Michigan Court of Appeals as a judge. And these are the ideals that I would follow uh, on this Michigan Supreme Court. And I think we need to make sure that we have that kind of Supreme Court. And that's why I'm running. The Michigan Supreme Court is responsible for the general administrative supervision of all courts in Michigan. Where do you see our courts in need of improvement? And how would you address that? Uh, thank you, Patrick. Um, I believe that we have the best legal system in the world, but only for those who can afford it. And so we need to make access to justice cheaper and more efficient. Um, we can do that uh, through uh, revising some of our court rules uh, to frankly make going to court cheaper. We can streamline procedures and we can use smartphone apps for some of the more common um, interactions with uh, our judicial system like traffic court or jury duty. Uh, we also need to continue to um, refine our court rules to make sure that people have the right to jury trials, uh, even during this time of COVID. Uh, just because we're in a pandemic, that does not mean that we lose our constitutional rights to a jury trial and, and other such uh, important rights. The killings of George Floyd and other minorities and the seemingly disparate treatment of persons of color in our system of justice raise the question of whether justice is truly blind. How do you propose to fortify the public's trust in the judiciary? Thank you for that question. Um, first and foremost, every judge and justice takes an oath to follow our federal and state constitutions. Our constitutions require that we dispense justice with due process and equal protection for everyone, not just some people. Uh, we need to make sure uh, as a society that law, enfor law enforcement has the necessary resources for, for more training and for better screening up front. Uh, we need more training so that uh, our police officers uh, are fully trained and prepared for any interaction that they might have. And we need to do a better uh, job of screening uh, at, the, at the employment level at the outset so that people who frankly should not become law enforcement don't become law enforcement. Um, I believe we also need to be uh, very transparent and expeditious, ex uh, expeditious in uh, bringing bad officers and uh, even bad judicial officers uh, to justice quickly. The State Joint Task Force on Jail and Pretrial Incarceration reported in January of this year that crime in Michigan is at a 50-year low, and yet the number of people incarcerated in county jails has tripled since the 1970s. That same study showed that black men made up 29% of jail admissions, while making up only 6% of the state's population. What role do you see Michigan courts playing in criminal justice reform? Justice reform is primarily a societal issue, and societal issues are best first tackled uh, at a societal level, which means uh, Congress and our state legislature needs to take the lead on this. Um, in the court system, we can strike down uh, statutes that are unconstitutional, that infringe on people's uh, right to equal protection. And we should do that uh, when, when we are faced with those cases. Um, judges are also on the front lines. 
And so we can uh, identify in our opinions when we see a problem. Uh, we can also um, work through our uh, um, judicial system, uh, our judicial organizations. Uh, in Michigan, we have the Michigan Judges Association, which I have been a member since taking the bench. And through that organization, we lobby uh, our legislature to make uh, reforms to advance um, social justice and uh, societal reform. So I think those are the best ways that we can tackle uh, this issue as, as uh, in the judiciary. Michigan's trial courts are overwhelmed with cases and parties representing themselves because they cannot afford counsel. And there is a perception held by many that justice favors the wealthy. As the saying goes, justice delayed is justice denied. What would you do as a justice on the Supreme Court to address these issues? As I indicated a little earlier, um, we do have the best legal uh, system in the world, but again, it's very expensive. And so it's only the best system for those who can afford it. So primarily we need to do a better, uh, better job uh, funding our indigent defense and legal aid uh, organizations. We also need, uh, as judges, we need to help those organizations with training. Um, I've worked with the State Appellate Defender Office uh, and uh, to, to explain what I believe are best practices uh, for our appellate defenders. And as judges, we need to take an active role in working with those organizations, one, for funding, and two, for training. Uh, I think that's the best way that we can get uh, people the, the legal counsel that they need so that they can navigate our uh, sometimes very complex judicial system. Brock Swartzel, thank you for joining us. Thank you, I appreciate it and I appreciate the time. From all of us here at WGVU Public Media, we thank you for logging on and please get out and vote Tuesday, November 3rd.